coming up a lot of we still have some debris piles that are here that are on the side of the road but it's nowhere near as bad as it was before they did a lot of cleanup and people are still cleaning up their yard so this is what's left over from oh so we are gonna go grab some coffee and get our day started the bad news my coffee spot is actually damaged from the hurricane so we're gonna have to go get coffee somewhere else here we are off of Cape Coral Parkway and you can tell that you know there's still a lot of businesses that are down from Hurricane Ian a lot of roofs I think the majority of the things that damage that came that actually came about is from the roofs and then the interior getting wet and damaged from there so you know everything is pretty much cleaned up down here for the most part but man you can see that in some places there's a pile like that there like right there's a great example you could see all the garbage outside like dumpsters in front of businesses like that and just getting the area cleaned up even more and prepared for um, reconstruction. But you can see for the most part that, you know, things down here are cleaned up. You know, unfortunately some businesses survived, some didn't. A lot of roofs got damaged. A lot of businesses got damaged, but they're bouncing back. You can see things are cleaned up and we, we are back to some sort of normalcy. The real reminders of Hurricane Ian is coming from debris piles like that over there and then all the blue tarp roofs. You know, these crews are working pretty hard to getting Cape Coral cleaned up and back to normal again. It's just going to take some time. Right now, though, we got to figure out where can I find coffee. That's the key to getting my morning started. That looks pretty cool. It's a mural right next to the Starbucks of the fire station off of Cape Parkway. There's that for you, hon. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Got my coffee. Let's go. We are going to go somewhere that I've been dreading to go, and that's the Yacht Club. And the main reason why is because I don't want to get emotional seeing what happened to our little beach area here in Cape. And there's all the three piles down this area still needing to get cleaned up and crews trying to get over here as well. Most of these homes got flooded, some sort of flooding. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a sailboat on top of land right over there. The detour. Oh, the whole place is shut down over there. Tennis courts are all messed up. So here I am at the Yacht Club and the auxiliary boat parking area. 
right now everything is closed over here you can't even get into the yacht club area but I kind of want to get you guys caught up on I haven't posted a video in a while because me and my family I uh, came down with the flu so it's been a rough couple two and a half weeks I'm getting caught up now anywho Today, we got a couple things going on. Um, we're actually gonna take a look at property with uh, clients of mine that are coming in from New Jersey. Taking a look at the area overall of Cape Coral, uh, see how it is after Hurricane Ian and you know what we can kind of expect of what's happening here. And you guys could kind of see what's happening as well in the area. I know it's kind of weird spot. I mean, we have astronomical interest rates right now, tons of properties with roof damage, and we've seen pricing of homes slightly dip. Land prices have definitely dipped. So it's been it's been an interesting journey these last few months. For, I would say between June to now, with the interest rates and the hurricane and everything that's been happening. I took a quick look at the numbers yesterday and it said that the inventory, we're up to like eight or nine months of inventory right now. I'm gonna dive into those numbers a little bit more. Let's get out of here and see what things look like. We are meeting with clients to go look at this property. We just put under contract. So it's our first time meeting them. They're coming down all the way from New Jersey and they just drove two hours from Winter Haven. So super exciting. Here they are. So here's the house that we're looking at. Definitely needs a new roof on there. Let me see if I can help you out with that. There's underlayment on top, but it'll definitely need a new roof. So we're gonna go in here and I'm just gonna give you a tour. My clients are inside, so let's go. Here's guest bedroom number one. Guest bathroom. Guest bedroom number two. And then Back in this corner, we have guest bedroom number three. There's the kitchen, the living room, master bedroom. <laughs> Master bath. And the garage. Pool area. We have decking with a trundle on this side. Pretty cool. We have a cabana or a, a hut, tiki hut. 
pretty great setup. And on this side over here is where all the pool equipment is. A little pad for a grill area right over there. All right, so we are here at this investment property. There's definitely some updates that need to be done to the home and everything else, but deals are still being put together. So like how we have this roof issue, for example, what they're doing right now for people that are in the midst of claims and things of like that, they're basically assigning the claim benefits to the new owner once they close on the property. And then they'll be able to go ahead and close the deal with the home. But for the most part, that's how deals are getting put together right now, specifically here in Cape Coral with damaged properties. So hopefully this just gives you an insight on how transactions are happening in the area right now and how we're putting these deals together. You gotta be careful. Some of these properties, they look good on the MLS and looks almost turnkey. Like I honestly thought that all we needed to do was the roof, but there's a bunch of little things that are in here that we need to do. And, you know, always, I'm a big fan of inspections. So the more inspections you could do, the better, because it gives us more leverage when negotiating with the sellers. But anywho, um, I'm sure we're gonna get out of here shortly. We're trying to get into another property. If we are not able to get in that property, I'm gonna give my clients a tour around Cape Coral. Um, different parts are looking to open a business. So I'm gonna give them a few suggestions of where their business could be a potentially a good fit. So. Let's go along for the ride. A little bit different style video, but I'm actually enjoying this. So let's go. I'm here with my clients and we are headed to Recreational Warehouse. So we could get pricing on a spa, outdoor spa, and a pool heater for our listing. So just showing them around and so we could get pricing for some of these prop, uh, for some of these pool equipment things and they can make a better decision when we're purchasing this Airbnb property. But I will keep you posted. I just finished wrapping up my meeting with my out-of-state clients that came down. Super nice family. We looked around, we came to some decisions. That property that we saw earlier, spoiler alert, um, we are deciding a few decisions on that property, but let me tell you, hmm, I'm trying to figure out a, a polite way to say this, but essentially what I'm trying to say is that sometimes your listing agent can screw up a deal. I don't have any other way to put it. You know, when somebody calls you over the phone on a property and they say something along the lines of, well, the seller's not gonna go for that, or the seller this, the seller that, you know, your job is to report and advise, not make decisions on behalf of the seller. And that's a good way to the buyer's agent and also the clients who came out of town for this specific property, spent at least $2,000 in inspections for you to be so rude and so disrespectful and not understand their time, not value their time. I mean, they're making it a $400,000 purchase. I don't care what scale you're on, $400,000 is a lot of money. So, you know, depending on how this agent and the sellers respond on this deal, we may end up backing out or we may come into a deal. I don't know, but those are the two options right now. However, we have identified a second property. Unfortunately, I was unable to document it because both memory cards in my camera are filled up. But anywho, I'm gonna wrap up this video and say thank you so much for watching. If you like this video or if you found it helpful in any type of way, go ahead and type that like button. And if you like to see more content like this, smash that subscribe button and click that bell notification so you're kept up to date with the latest content. Thank you so much. And as always, own more real estate. Tchau.